Here we are, rounding out our week of videos, the week that comes right before episode 183, and uh, we're ending it on the what, NXT, because that's that's all we got. Yeah, the, the what? The NXT. The uh, Lucha Underground, which happens on Wednesdays, is not currently airing. Uh, we're waiting for season four to yeah, they should be, they're gonna film be, and finish. Yeah, they're going to be filming edit pretty soon. And put their stuff on TV. But this is still the midweek wrap-up. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, we're only wrapping up one thing. Yeah. Which, Without any further ado. Yeah, so in the same vein as everything else, here we go. Uh, we had Riddick Moss and Tino Sabatelli defeat Heavy Machinery fucking Joey. Not fucking Joey. That's not how they defeated them. They actually defeated them in a tag team match in our opening contest. Uh, we had Undisputed Era talking about their upcoming matches at NXT TakeOver. Roderick Strong defeated Fabian Eichner in a one-on-one match, which was pretty damn good. Uh, and then Roddy called out Lars Sullivan. Yeah, because... Because Roddy wants to die. I guess. He, he, he has a Things son. Things have been taking a downward spiral. He has a son. He passed on. He has a prodigy. He doesn't oh. need to be around anymore. Okay. Uh, we had part one of Who Are TM61. We'll be getting part two next week. Lacey Evans defeated Aaliyah. And then was sort of run off by Shayna, who then choked out Aaliyah. Who, who was then definitely run off by Ember Moon. Yeah, and then uh, we had the challenge made and accepted, and we have our women's title match for NXT TakeOver. Uh, Regal made that match, and had Z- and Zelina ended up uh, interrupting the little interview and said that Johnny Gargano really doesn't deserve his spot and should have to defend that spot against Velveteen Dream. Regal's yeah. like, eh, I don't know about that. And Johnny's like, bitch, bring it. And we also found out that Noe Jose's conga line to the top starts next week, so we're going to have a match with Noe Jose. And in the main event, Authors of Pain defeated Street Profits, and they will challenge Undisputed Era for the NXT Tag Team titles at NXT TakeOver Philadelphia. Hmm. So, what'd you like? About NXT this week. Oh, goodness gracious, what did I like? That it was NXT? Pretty much. Can can I just say, like, the whole thing? Yeah. that's No, th- I'm going to say Aaliyah's in-ring improvement. Absolutely. Not. I'm, I'm still not going to say that she's good, but well, she's, no, she, she's better. She's got some learning to do, but she's definitely better than the better last time we saw her. Better than where she was. So, I'm going to give her that. All right. Uh, what about you? Uh, I'm going to say that I, uh, despite the fact that they lost, I liked the... What, what they did with the Street Profits is they finally showed uh, what Angelo Dawkins really brings to the team. Because Montez Ford was getting mm. beat up by AOP through the entirety of the match and legitimately needed to tag in the bigger partner. Yeah, and so actually tagging in Angelo and having him come in and being able to match size with the Authors of Pain really made his stake in the tag team more important because Montez is super athletic, but he's also very skinny and can be tossed around very easily. So seeing Angelo finally have his spot really shine uh, within this tag team was uh, was what I liked. Yeah, it was cool. Um, What'd you love? What did I love about Takeover? Or not Takeover? <laughs> what did I love about Takeover, which I saw first? Hey, you guys haven't seen it yet. It's pre recorded. <laughs> Everything's a lie. <laughs> um, no. What did I love? Yeah, what did the, you love? The match between Roderick Strong and Fabian Eichner. That was a pretty fucking good match. That was a great match. It wasn't it wasn't as long as I had hoped it would go, um, but they did have a lot of stuff they needed to fit in this taping. Yeah. So uh, they did a really good job with the time they had. Uh, man, they killed it. Fabian Eichner is... I'm going to say he's the guy to watch for 2018. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if, he, yeah, if he keeps getting that spot, which I really feel like he's made a good claim as to why he deserves a spot on the roster. You know, yeah, if, if he gets if he gets more time this year, he's definitely going to blow up, and I think people are really going to appreciate what he brings. Well, I really hope he doesn't blow up. That would just be sad. Well, not, not like, literally blow up, because, yeah. That's, oh. No. I'm, oh. I'm, I'm, t- I'm talking, like, like, like his name, like his name and, and his stock 
his stock blows up. Okay. His, his importance on the show. I, um, I get it. Yeah. I get it now. Um, I just thought, I was like, that's a really morbid no, thing I, I, to I, I don't, I don't to happen want, to somebody. I don't want Fabian Eichner to actually blow up. I think, I, I like the guy. I want him to stick around. Um, what did I love? I... I loved a couple different things. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna split my love 50 50 here. Uh, first off, I I really loved the whole women's segment from the beginning of Aaliyah versus Lacey Evans to the making of the title match at NXT Takeover. I loved the fact that we, you know, Aaliyah being the smaller. You know, she's not the most popular on the roster, but she was good to get sympathy on. Mm-hmm. And that worked really well in favor of Lacey, who had a you know was able to show her dominance over Aaliyah during the match, then cutting a really good promo, and then that promo actually leading into a boost for Shayna, and then that boost from Shayna turned into another really great promo from Ember Moon. So I thought the build of kind of this new guard of women's wrestlers on NXT was done really well, and I love the way they did it. And I also really loved Johnny Gargano taking Zelina's challenge and uh, his his promo, uh, just accepting it and being like, yeah, okay, people want to keep doubting me, that's fine. I'll give he a was, shot. He was very emphatic yeah, in I, his promo. Yeah, I, 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 I like, I like when, when, when I can feel the passion from a wrestler, that's what I really like. So watching Johnny come out and be like, I, I hear what people are saying, you know, and I'm gonna I'm gonna prove him wrong. I'll give Velveteen his shot next week, uh, but he he said that no one's gonna take his opportunity from him, and he's gonna be the next NXT champion, which makes me excited because I think that means that Tommaso Ciampa is gonna come back at Takeover and screw him over because he said no one's gonna take that away yeah, from him. Which which I mean that was my call as soon as Tommaso was gonna take time off. Is that as soon as Johnny Gargano's in the title picture? Yeah. Tommaso's going to rear his bald, psychotic, Amish-looking head. (laughs) Alright. What did you hate on NXT? Uh, Or strongly dislike. It's NXT. It's hard to hate things. I I didn't like that the Velveteen Dream wasn't on it. Um, That's fair. He was mentioned, which is better than nothing. I mean, he did have his promo last week, so... Um... I don't know. Let me look at your notes real quick. Go for it. I'll talk about what I hated. I hated the fact that I liked something that Tino Sabatelli did. Because I don't like <laughs> Tino Sabatelli. I have no problem with Riddick Moss, and I like their music. Uh, but I do not That's like true. I do not like Tino Sabatelli. But he had a really cool like backward like backward jump into a crossbody that ended up getting caught by Dozer, and then he got dropped. So ultimately, it ended great for me because Tino got hurt. Uh, but it was a very impressive move, so I hate the fact that I have to give props to Tino Sabatelli. Yeah, um, yeah, there's nothing really that I can say that I strongly disliked. It's NXT. It's- um, it something I thought was funny. Uh, so where they're doing the tapings, it's not shaped the same as Full Sail. Yeah. So when Ember Moon did the run in to save, it was really awkward. Yeah, because she like she, she took like, it, she took one step down and she's like, I just got to jump off this staircase. Yeah. And like I was I was waiting for her to like jump straight from the stage and try and get on the apron. Ooh. Uh, it's sketchy because the post would be right there. And it, we've we've already had sketchy situations where Ember tries to jump a little further than she should. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, I I didn't dislike anything. Yeah, about it's, the next thing. Like um, they did, they did great. The fact that it's you know one of the first episodes of the year, mm-hmm. um, and they've got takeover in you know a little over a week and a half. Uh, it's just it, I think they did a really good job of building takeover. And building a little bit of new tension, you know, with the the Roddy calling out Lars after Lars called out Killian, Killian. last week, that's turning into a very interesting situation that I don't think is going to happen at Takeover, Takeover. but it could. Um, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun to see how everything goes. I really, really appreciated that the women's match 
were two women who aren't typically highlighted yeah. characters in NXT's current women's division. It's, yeah, it's it's starting to build that that women's undercard because you know you know obviously Ember's at the top at you know the top of the mountain. You you know you have Billy and Peyton up there. Shayna is a shoe in. Kyrie Sane is a shoe in. You know, with both of them going to the finals of the Mae Young Classic, and now starting to build Lacey, you know, giving Lacey that that chance to be a character. Yeah, it's really showing the heel side that she started like teasing during the Mae Young Classic. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and letting her just take it and whoosh, run yeah. with it. And it, it was a, it was a good it, it was a I you know usually you get those people that do their very first promo and there's a little bit of stumbling here and there. Mm-hmm. I thought Lacey did a really good job of that yeah. being like her first on-screen promo Very, other than the Mae Young Classic. Uh, for people who watched Glow... Mm. Uh, I still haven't finished it. I have to. Very Liberty Bell-esque. Oh, that, uh, I mean, if, that, if Liberty Bell were a heel. I mean, that, that that makes sense. She's a former Marine, so, you yeah, know, it's that that hoorah America, uh, Americana type of, type of gimmick. And, yeah. And yeah, and, and I, you know, she calls herself the first lady of NXT, and so the lady of NXT, the la- yeah, the, first yeah, lady. the lady of NXT, and so you know, she's got, she's got a, a little bit, you know, she's got that heel swagger that works really well. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see her build. I'm excited to see Aaliyah get even better because if if this match was any sort of sign, uh, she could be a pretty viable contender here eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, any uh. Any final, final things you want to talk about? No, I, I mean, I think we covered everything pretty good this go around. Um, it was just, a, it was a strong, not like over the top good, but a very strong way to start the year for NXT. Yeah, uh, I, th- I think they're doing really good. The only other thing I want to say is, you know, we we mentioned it a little bit yesterday because it was kind of our favorite thing of Tuesday was. You know, with War Machine and Ricochet and Candice uh, all getting signed and mm-hmm. now being in the Performance Center. They took their group photo today yeah. and posted it. Uh, I now need to find a new favorite indie tag team because one of my indie tag teams isn't together anymore. And now two of them are in NXT or at least under the WWE banner. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I got I to gotta, I gotta pick a new one. Shit. And speaking of that, Undisputed Era, I really liked their promo. I thought it was a... They did a good job. It was a good job building two of the the, the high build matches at uh, TakeOver. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, and also it's nice to see TM61 back on TV. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm excited to see them come yeah, back. Yeah, I've recently started hearing that they were doing live events again. I wouldn't be surprised if they make their return at the NXT post-TakeOver. There'll be one of those one of those matches that's uh, recorded prior to takeover. I can see it. Uh, so yeah, glad to see them back. Loving NXT. Please let's get Lucha Underground season four happening soon because we need some Lucha in our lives. Two five live is not enough. Prince Pumalus. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's Lucha still, Underground. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the roster is taking a vacation and impact, so they got they got to keep fresh somehow, man. <laughs> they got to keep it up. Uh, yeah, I guess that's gonna close it out here for the midweek wrap up, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You no, know, click those links down in the description. There are so many social media links. You know, there's all that all that social media stuff, but there's also the podcast, That's the SoundCloud link, and then of course there's Reasonable Wrestling. It's fans. Reasonable the W. Like, like wrestling, wrestling. Uh, where we do have our punishment videos. We got one more. We got to shoot. We got a couple extra videos over there as well. We should have an unboxing video probably next week. We might even post that up just before the Royal Rumble happens, which means next week is predictions. So Ooh, predictions villain re- just re- got his ticket. Repping our boy right now. Predictions. Uh, I mean, well, this is Marty Squirrel, but don't tell predictions villain that. Uh, but he'll be in town next week to, uh, yeah, talk about not only the Royal Rumble, but take over Philadelphia as well. Yeah, man. He's got a lot of people to talk about. Yeah, he does. Uh, up, upwards of close to 60, depending on how many names we have announced for the Rumbles by yeah. then. Yeah. Well, I mean, definitely 
I'm not even fixing Joey this time. <laughs> uh, definitely at least sixty because yeah, yeah with, I mean, with, with the undercard the and fact takeover, that we've got the women's rumble is already two thirds of the way full. About yeah. uh, we got about twelve guys announced yeah. for that rumble. And the, the, I, I feel like we're gonna get a lot closer uh, with the impending Raw twenty five. Yeah. So if you enjoy listening to uh, how Predictions Villain says people's names. Look forward to that video. Uh, but for now, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. And as always, fuck, fuck Enzo. Oh, you got loud. Well, I, I gotta be emphatic. So. Yeah, okay. Fair. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>